And now, we turn to the world of sports. The football season is upon us, and that means it's time to get ready for your fantasy football drafts. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the Cat's Pajamas, and only tool you need. The best rankings in the business. Sleepers, breakouts, values. It's even got a free companion app. Don't be a pigeon-livered foozler. The ultimate draft kit will keep you on the up and up and keep all the hornswogglers at bay. Don't even think about entering a fantasy football draft without it. Don't be a square. Head to ultimatedraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in one and all. Not quite back yet. Someday... The lion will roar again. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people very unhappy with your lack of an intro. No respect for the sickness. I lost my voice. Well, you didn't lose your voice. I lost I'm some of my voice. You. Yeah, I mean, honestly, first words out of uh, out of the gate here. Wasn't sure if the volume would be there. If it would sound like me. I'm kind of okay with where it's at. Yeah, it sounds enough like you. And it wasn't, you know, it's like when you when you start where it's like you don't like it anyways, it, does it really matter? Probably not. Right. Probably not. Hi, Jay. Hey, what's up, dude? Mike's here. Chillo. There was a moment earlier, Jay, when I thought, like, you didn't have a hat on to start the show, and I thought you were going to, like, finally, I thought you were going to do it. It's not haircut day, my man. Okay. When I get a haircut... You'll Wait, see do you these do it for one? Locks. You do it for one day? Yeah. Oh, because you prep up for the. That's right. I don't want to give respect. Out of respect for my Tinder. Okay. Okay. Um. So uh, when you're at home, what is the hat ratio? Uh, good that's good pr- question. Yeah, that's a great question that our audience really wants to know, and I would say that the it's, people do. Yeah, the people want to know. I would say it's usually seventy percent of the time no hat. No hat. Yeah, walk home. in, okay. hang my hat by the door, and just if you have a guest, live in my shame within those walls. If you have a guest coming over, have you ran to get a hat? 100%, <laughs> my man. Yes, 100, 100%. If a guest is over, my ratio is more like 95% hat. Huh. Okay, well, it's good to know. I, just, I feel like there's once that hits, or once it dips to a certain percent, nope, goes up, is like that's when you just shave the head. Yeah, I you got, did that once. I did that. I don't think I got the right skull shape. I think I. But know. you did that. You weren't a hat man back then. Oh, you're saying shave it. Like and cover. I'm saying now, if all you'd ever do is wear a hat, That's what's right. the difference? Then why go get why go get haircuts and just just be free? Yeah, instead, give yourself a haircut every day. You don't have to. do How it often every day. do you uh, speaking to the bald one back there? How often do you have to like? Is it every day? No, uh, every like three days. Every th- like a but like he, in the shower. Yeah. He okay. keeps it real close. Are you a you're a straight razor? They make a special like it's called like a head blade or uh, like a head razor. All right, you can look into that. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> we have a great show for you today. We are talking through old, bland, and undervalued players, and whether there are some opportunities there for fantasy football. It, it's been a funny off season because my dynasty team. You know, speaking to our leagues, there are those of you out there that are probably more like Jason and Mike, who have some young studs on yeah, their dynasty the roster. Young bucks. But it's been a kind of a a, a funny off season for my dynasty team because I'm known as the I'm the guy with the old players mm-hmm. who all seem to be getting contracts. You are you have the golden touch right now. Your your roster, if they're on there, like for instance, Alvin Kamara is on your roster. I haven't heard a peep about any kind of contract extension whatsoever. I know it's coming <laughs> only because every other elder statesman that you think is like an expiring dynasty asset on your team has received some sort of extension. It's it's pretty wild. So uh, today we'll talk about some old players that get devalued due to age and whether you think that they have some seasons left. Talk through some news. We made an announcement on the Tuesday show. 
letting people know that we have our 10th anniversary live event on Saturday, August 24th at the Palace Theater in Los Angeles. Tickets are available at BallersLive.com, our 10th anniversary Megalo show, so you can go over there. And um, there was one website question submitted by Andrew in relation to the Megala show that okay. he wants us to answer. He said, hello, ballers. My sister's wedding is on August 24th as well. How do I explain mm -hmm. to her that I cannot make her wedding? You don't explain that. You don't miss her wedding. They need to move the date. Uh, this is oh, a wow. both and she's going to want to come to the show too. She didn't know. She didn't know when, you know, we just announced the show on August 24th. That's not her fault, but now, now she understands she can move her date. Now it's her fault. Well, now it's her problem to solve. So uh, yeah, just, just change the wedding date, go to hers, go to ours, bring her along. She it's can't be get great married show. at the show. I will allow that. I okay. will absolutely allow that. Yeah. So that's an option too. Um, the ultimate draft kit available right now at ultimate also, ballerslive.com if you want to yeah, yeah, come I, to the show. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it, it never, hurt, just, never hurts to hear it twice. Now I'm imagining people actually Getting trying, married. trying to have a ceremony <laughs> during the show. If I mean, it would have to be like 90 seconds. I mean, you couldn't do a long ceremony. We wouldn't probably. Just a do you, do you. Yeah. Actually, Get out of here. Can any of us officiate? Yeah, I can. I can, I can do an online course in minutes. Okay. All right, you can follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers. Jason is at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. Mike at FF Hitman. Quick question of the day. This comes in from Sean. I have heard you say uh, to avoid picking the onesie positions, so quarterbacks and tight ends, back to back. These would be positions where in most leagues there's only <clears throat> one that starts for you as opposed to running backs, normally a couple mm -hmm. – Wide receivers, two or three. Could you elaborate on why you advise against taking onesie positions back to back? I would love to hear your thoughts. It it comes down to just supply demand. This is economics. It's called a onesie, O N E, because you're playing one of them. Like this is not super flex. We're not talking about tight end premium. Just regular scoring leagues. You start one of them, and every single week you're starting at least two wide receivers, at least two running backs. That's not even taking into account three wide receiver leagues or the flex position. So you just you need more of them each and every single week. That means during uh, like injuries and bye weeks, you need more and more of them. So th that's well, why really, not back to back? Uh, I th well, it's not so much back to back. That's not the advice we give, just both early. Yes. Um, you know, if you were to take them back to back nine, 10, great. That's not the issue. The, the issue is when you're ta when you're spending a premium, it's not so much about like, oh, we don't want you to have a great tight end and a great quarterback. It's the opportunity cost you give up for in the third round. You're giving up a prime, very important running back or wide receiver. You're going to need more of them. You're going to need them more with bi-week fill-ins, with injuries, and all of that. And so when you if, you if you take your third and fourth pick, and so now and, and you go quarterback and tight end, great, you got those positions on lock. But you're going into the fifth round with presumably, you know, either zero running backs or wide receivers or one of each. And that is really hard to to play a, a position that is the most important, which is running back and wide receiver, um, with without, you know, premium assets. It's just very, very difficult. Is there an aspect, too, of risk aversion with, you know, obviously high draft capital pick on a onesie position, that player gets hurt, wipes out that position for you? Right, yeah, absolutely. If if you're going, if you're investing in uh, Mahomes or in a Kelsey early, and they get injured, your your gap to the next fill in is enormous. Your your cost is there, but obviously with a position where you're going to roster many more of them, you can take that take those hits a little easier. I'm curious, are there ADP situations right now, average draft position, that people are going to be tempted by the like, where's there's Mahomes one, there, and Kelsey that's right the now? One, that's the one for is me. Is that third and fourth? That's third and fourth. That's the one for me where I am actually genuinely for the first time in, like, I don't know, seven or eight years, I've been tempted. Because not only – Oh, yeah, Kelsey 303, Mahomes 402. Not only is it a value on each one of those players over the previous several years, you know, uh, last year Kelsey was the fifth overall pick. Now he's in the third round. You can get him. 
Usually Mahomes is a second-round pick. Now he's in the fourth round. So you're getting a value on those guys, but you're also getting the stack. So like well, hey, Lamar is going at 404. Andrews at 411. It's, there's a chance he would slip into the fifth. Mm -hmm. you, if you took Lamar early, you might be tempted if Andrews was there in the fifth. Well, and it, the each round that you get later, it's more and more – agreeable to do because when you you know the difference between giving up a fifth round running back or wide receiver versus a third round running back or wide receiver is massive so yeah I mean Lamar Andrews you're starting to get okay I think I, th I think both of those can be okay this is not a hard and fast rule written in stone it's just it's a just, risk situation it's, it's one of those yes. things we want you to be aware of when you are when you're on the clock if all of a sudden it turns out that in the fourth round even though you took Kelsey the clear and obvious best player available is Mahomes great but if there's running backs and wide receivers, it's a matter of who's on the board that are really, really quality players that have dropped there to sacrifice a one of those for a onesie when you already rostered one. is It's just – it's not usually a winning strategy. News and notes from around the league. Well, let's talk about some Browns minicamp updates. Jerry Judy dealing with a minor injury, and Amari Cooper did not report to Browns minicamp. He's in the final year of a deal. I just looked at this. He gets paid $23 million this year. But he would like... He's, he sees what's going on. I, I honestly, at 30 years old, after the way he played last year, this is your chance to get it yeah. again. I mean, you're not going to get it at 31 or 32. So, you know, Amari Cooper staying away from minicamp right now looking for a deal. He is on my dynasty team. Yeah, Probably so going to get a deal. We know he'll get it. Probably going to get it. Uh, T. Higgins did not report to Bengals minicamp, but I believe Jamar Chase did. Yeah, Higgins is going to do what the franchise players often do, which is I'm not going to sign my tender and not going to have to go to all those offseason stuff that I don't have to do when you're not giving me a contract, and then hopefully he doesn't show up like Fat Thor last year. That's mm. what Jacobs did. Yeah. Brees Hall working off to the side. There have been some Jets updates in general. Still dealing with a minor lower body injury. He missed time at OTAs as well, so precautionary right now. Yep, not concerned yet. But you'll be really excited when you see him go through drills, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's no different than Kyron, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, we're not concerned, and then he shows up. It's like, ooh, thank <laughs> I was <laughs> super concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I might not have let on, but I was terrified. Yeah, I mean. It, you it, are a little bit. It you is, are. It is always that way. I mean, no matter how minimal it is, you – you know, when, when Anthony Richardson was saying, you know, he's he's not 100%, he's 95%. It's like, oh, that's good news, but you're still you're always going to be like, I, I just want everything to be great. You know, Joe Burrow uh, had a quote this last week. It was like, you know, that it's a, it's a process. Coming back from injury, there'll be good days and bad days and all that. That's just the truth. But I, I don't want that truth. I just want it to be all good days. <laughs> yeah, don't tell me that. Right. Mike Williams expected to be fully cleared from his ACL injury. In August. Okay. And then, I, I mean, look, Aaron Rodgers has been missing minicamp, unexcused. Um, it's, uh, it's not excused per the head coach, but they knew he had a previous engagement mm -hmm. that was important to Aaron Rodgers that he's at, but it's not excused. It, it's, 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 you do not it, have permission, but you're going to do it anyway. Right. It's, it's a, it's a weird story. Like if, if this you, thing got spun out of control. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter that much. But it, like, if if somebody decided they're not going to be there, even if you wanted them to be there, what's your best PR move? Your best PR move is, yeah, it's fine with me though. It's not yeah. to say like I'm upset and then mess up your off season. So um, he's at an event that's important to him. I will say this: with him out, it does. It has lifted my spirits of Garrett Wilson quite a bit. Wait, him being out? Yeah, because it reminds me that Tyrod Taylor is now a capable backup there. Oh, okay. He's been sure. having you know really good you know drills with Garrett Wilson in the absence, and, and all that doesn't make me feel better. It makes me feel better because what we saw the basement with Zach Wilson last year when Garrett Wilson was trying to play football with him was so far down, and I'm worried about Aaron Rodgers. I'm worried about his health. I'm worried about his capability. It's just nice to know that like it's not going to go to an incompetent backup. Tyrod Taylor is a competent backup. Should He's a competent backup, but if I told you today he's starting the season, 
Enjoy watching Garrett Wilson's ADP. Oh, I would. I wouldn't. I, I mean, you're going to yes. take an L at the ADP. But if you, but if you then said, just kidding, it's Zach Wilson. I'd be like, enjoy putting him on your bench. Yeah. yeah. No, that that makes it's sense. It's knowing because you had the with the rookie year, you had some games like Flacco. Am I remembering that right, oh, Kyle? Like, yeah. Like Flacco and Mike White, where it was. If as long the as problem the with quarterback Tyrod. doesn't suck, then Garrett Wilson will st still be okay. Which because you, it's a risky. It feels like a risky pick right now, drafting Garrett Wilson where he is because of because you're so reliant on Aaron Rodgers. But Ty, it could be so much worse than Tyrod. So I'm 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 on Jason's side of it's nice to know that someone is there. Just a good. It's a reminder that Tyrod is there. Okay. Yeah, I mean it was it can't get worse than last year. So it can yeah could have stayed the same. It can be bad though. It can still be bad. Um. Tyrod's such a weird player because he's had good games. He's had games he where also, he, wait, he likes Who's to... behind Taylor? I yeah, because he's an injury risk. They, he's going to get hurt. They drafted one, didn't they? Uh, let me see. I'm so, pretty sure Jordan Travis. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not good. No. We're, we're really close here again. Yeah, it's it, you're, you're taking a quarterback it's risk. A, it's a risk, yeah. Um, and then we did get news that Jonathan Brooks – who we talked about on the Tuesday show, may not be ready for the start of training camp. Jason, I'm trying to read your expression. Rookie running back uh, for the Panthers. Yeah, I mean, he's coming off of a, an ACL uh, during his final season in college. I thought it was going to drop him more in the NFL draft than it did. It did not. The team invested in him. I love that he may not be ready because this is not a setback situation. This is a take your time, don't rush him back. He is the future. This is not a team that needs him out there incredibly early I think Jonathan Taylor is go or Jonathan Brooks is going to be a fantastic okay. pick this year second half when you so if let you me draft push back though okay yeah because we had a conversation about Jonathan Brooks the ADP is going to go up then we had a conversation about buying the injury debt mm -hmm. it's not the same as the, you know when bets built out our chart 71 percent of the time underperforms ADP it wasn't factoring in collegiate injuries but this is still coming back from an ACL. I, I think it is a, a unique and different case than an injury dip because this isn't a, the this isn't a situation where you've got you know Saquon and he's had this year or that year and now he's injured and he's dipped in ADP. No one knows what Jonathan Brooks is, anyways. There isn't really a set ADP where he was established, and so if he starts the season looking like he's going to be the backup, his ADP is going to be so low that it's not really an ADP dip. It's just no risk. No, that makes sense. Low risk, and what I would project for Jonathan Brooks, even though uh, he should be better next year, guy like we know this running backs, especially the the second year after the ACL recovery, then they get back into who they used to be. But Jonathan Brooks for the Panthers over the second half should see so much volume, and if as long as he's unless they have to manage him, yeah, yeah, it's just the the projection would be you're talking about volume. So then, just real quick, do like. Then Jay, do you have interest in Chuba as a later round? Uh, I mean, uh, is Chuba even being drafted? A guy just for those first three to four weeks that you may have someone that can start. Yeah, I mean, I I, th I think it's okay. I mean, I I'll have to wait and see. I'm not I'm not personally positive that it's Chuba that would be the starter versus Miles Sanders. I think both those guys are neither one is, is who this team wants to be the primary ball carrier so I'm not I, I think there are other options out there later in drafts I'd rather grab a Devin Singletary who I know is the starter and can fill in for a couple weeks to pair with Jonathan Brooks than than the presumed starter for Carolina from week 12 on he was the running back nine averaging more points than Jameer Gibbs in yeah. that time span yeah he had a he had a great stretch of games I I will certainly be betting against that to repeat okay and uh, might as well break this out for Mike's sake. Oh, what do we got? Well, we got our coach speak, Mike. Is How do we not love the coach speak? I, I mean, I do. Is this one for I me? don't remember if the train stops on its own. No, you stop the train. You are the conductor. <laughs> Good. Good to know. John Harbaugh, Ravens head coach, talks about – Oh, yeah. He was talking about oh, yeah. whether oh, yes. Derrick Henry can maintain the same workload he saw in Tennessee. Can he? He said, well, I do believe that he can. Yeah. I mean, I watched the wear and tear he put on defenses, ours included. Yes. I can't wait to see him in action. Good. Good. <laughs> so, um, 
for those of you that have them, that's great news. I love a good outlier. I love a good right. outlier. It, you know, Derrick Henry was for four seasons uh, a mathematical fantasy football outlier where you go, I don't draft early first round running backs that don't catch the ball. Unless it's Derrick Henry. Right. Because he's literally. There's a lot of unlesses with him. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of unlesses. I'm going to keep unlessing Derrick Henry. Oh, he's too old. <laughs> Unless, unless it's Derrick Henry. He's a unless king. he's a Yeti. Yeah, exactly. I will keep unlessing Derrick Henry. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with old, bland, and undervalued options. All right. Before we jump into Derek th Henry. this segment... <laughs> I did want to get a quick status update, Jason. You made a you made a choice at lunchtime oh, 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 to go double hot dogs today, and uh, you uh, double chili dog, uh, uh, double cheese. That was chili a chili dog. cheese uh, dog. Uh, I mean, like, that's that's implied. And you you had been eating well for a long time, but you said that today you noticed the impact a little bit more severely than in years past yeah i've spent my life uh abusing my body uh nutritionally and i've spent the last several weeks uh taking care of cleaning myself, it up cleaning it up and then i was like oh check out them chili <laughs> cheese dogs those look delicious and to be fair very egged on by andy over here <laughs> which um i don't blame you because they were delicious and i am feeling every ounce <laughs> Of that chili flowing through my veins right now. <laughs> I feel them a, hot dogs trying to come this, back up. Was this a uh, chili with bean or without? No bean. No bean. Okay. No bean. Now, this was, uh, I only brought it up because this was a topic of conversation just before the show, and he was really noticing. He needed some medicine. He was I got saying, my Pepsi <laughs> complete. <laughs> he, said, he said that he had no, he's like, I've eaten dogs before, and this time it's really. I'm just surprised. Yeah, I think your body doesn't want this stuff. And I I think what it is, because I, I started to give the argument that, like, wow, it's crazy how your body can get used to, you know, I, I've eaten poorly and I don't always feel like this. And I think what the truth is, is I always felt like this. So <laughs> right. I never noticed. Yeah, you've just been feeling a little bit better. Yeah, now I'm just feeling not, not better, just normal, <laughs> like I should. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, speaking of being old. Old, bland, and undervalued. Apparently, we had our first old, bland, and undervalued episode in July of 2017. What a year. It included players such as Philip Rivers, Jason Witten, Frank Gore, Larry Fitzgerald, Terrence West. Oh, Terrence West. Yeah. Not, not a name yeah. I was expecting to remember today. Terrence West and Jonathan Stewart. That's yeah. Yeah. So nice. There, there, every every year there are a handful of guys that make a massive impact on fantasy football that their ADPs are completely nerfed because they're old, they're bland, and therefore undervalued. Last year, one of Andy's my guys, Mike Evans, fits the bill where it was like you're just used to him. You think is situate he's not going to have a career year, and he didn't necessarily have a career year, and yet it was awesome. It helped people win fantasy championships. It was a great resurgence. So we're going to go through a a bunch of uh, all the old players and basically say, do we think they're undervalued? Yeah, this is not a message to go draft the old guys. This is a message of like let's have a discussion about some players that you know we can push back against the bias. And over the last decade, we've averaged 3.8 wide receivers, age 30 plus, that finished in the top 24. So, um, about four wide receivers a year in that age range, 30 plus. Uh, last year, there were six of them. Mike Evans finished at seven at the position, Keenan at eight, Stephon Diggs at nine, Devontae Adams at 10, Adam Thielen. <laughs> Adam Thielen finished at 18. In fact, he was one of the best players over the first half of the year. And then I got tired. And then he got tired. And DeAndre Hopkins as well was in the top 24 last year. So it happens. Now, Cooper Cup's the first name I want to bring up. He's going to be 31 in the season. He's 30.9 years old right now. 
He's being drafted as the wide receiver 22. So he's one of the guys that the community is already expecting to be one of the four that makes it in. However, you know, you look at Cooper Cup, you can talk about the injuries. They have been a huge problem for two straight years. He's ended up with 812 receiving yards and 737 after his almost 2,000-yard season. But all the peripheral metrics on Cooper Cup have gone down in a big fashion, whether it's his yards per route run in general, dropping from 3.1 to 2.4 to 1.8. His yards per route run against zone defenses has, has dropped, 2.7, 2.5, 2.2. Target per route run has dropped. Fantasy points per target, which I love that metric. I think the fantasy points per target metric is one of the most consumable, um, easy to understand, easy to translate. 1.9, 1.5, 1.4. Doing less with less. So where are you with the Cooper Cup experiment in drafts right now? He's going in the late fourth, middle to late fourth. Um, are you are you going to be targeting him? I, I am... 100% fine getting Cooper Cup in the late fourth. I expect Pukunakua to be the one for this team and Cooper Cup to be the two. But this is a team led by Sean McVay that year after year after year after year after year has had incredibly powerful wide receiver performances. Now, the last several years, it has been Cooper Cup and then it has been Pukunakua. But prior to that, you saw Cooper Cup and Robert Woods have multiple seasons where you know both guys were top 13 fantasy wide receivers. Cooper Cup is very, very good. He's been dealing with injuries. Um, now, th th that's really it, right? I, even on a fantasy points uh, per target basis, if you look at some of that, you look at the touchdowns per game played, and that's really gone down. I don't think that that is indicative of – I don't think that's prescriptive for the future. Cooper Cup around the goal line is still an incredible, strong asset, and he had so many targets last year in that area that didn't connect. I think that Matthew Stafford's still going to go to him. So at the back of the fourth, if he falls to the back of the fourth, I'm I'm fine grabbing Cup there. I I actually think you're probably taking him over Devontae Smith, Jason, and DK Metcalf, two players that I know you like. Yeah, I I mean they're obviously who's on the board is going to make a big deal to me. I'm he's not going, just taking. Yeah, he's going a couple spots ahead of them. Sorry. Um. Yeah. I mean, I I personally I still believe in in DK Metcalf a little bit more, so I would be taking Metcalf over him. Uh, but I, I'm not out on Cooper Cup this season. The to me, it's just a matter of injury. Like, do you think he is going to continue struggling with injuries? Which is fine to think that he has the last couple of years. He's older. Um, all the reports. I mean, they're stupid. Yeah, it's like it's worthless to even bring it up. All the reports are he looks so healthy and all that jazz. But they always do, right? Yeah, of course. So best shape of his life. I will take him here. In the fourth? Yeah, because I believe the ceiling is higher for him than the Smith-Metcalf situation. I have so much more confidence in what they've done on the offensive line in Los Angeles, the quarterback play of Matthew Stafford, um, and the fact that Cooper Cup could kind of reemerge. I think that you've got a year. I've got a year where I'm happy to go um, grab Cooper Cup in the fourth because the ceiling's a little bit more... Um, significant to me than some of the other options yeah, Mike, I, so, I, I, I will just say I think one of the differences when we look at old fantasy assets is do they still have a ceiling outcome because that's really where I think you want to start fading the veteran Cooper Cup still does have a ceiling outcome Cooper Cup could end even up with, with the yards per out run and the fantasy points per target yeah because the fantasy points per target I think are are primarily like touchdowns per game his utilization around the goal line was there so I, I think you could still have a top 10 fantasy performance the way that, you know, Mike Evans did last year. If you look at him, you know, on the uh, – just what he actually did, which it was a very hot, very cold season, he still was at 11.2 points per game, and that was – like, in I guess uh, we're, we're back onto injury, but it's, you know, he was recovering from a major injury to start the year. You, you, you – Again. That, yeah, but it's like when it's when it start when it happens in training camp, it's generally a really bad sign, and yet he was still able to give you, you know, five really good week. Oh, mm -hmm. go six, yeah, six, well, and weeks. three like three week winning performances. So, I think that the 
you laid it out great of just does he still have a ceiling and I think he still does like if if Stafford is still there I think that both him and Puka can be uh top 20 guys I'll I'll still take the bet on Puka before Cooper Cup but it's a Cooper Cup for me will not be a player I'm drafting like I'm trying to get him on every single squad like I'm not going to overload but I'm going to make sure that some of my teams do have uh do have Cup. Well and, and and one of Cup's worst games last year where he only caught two passes that was a game Matthew Stafford didn't play in. So that goes to some of those targets per outrun numbers and everything on this season. I think I think the tough part with an older former star is the consistency you're talking about. They don't come out and do it every week. They come out and show flashes on a good week when they're feeling good. It's like Hopkins last year. You know, Hopkins had weeks where he was the number two, four, eight, but it was few and far between. It right. wasn't the old every week. But um, what about Adam Thielen this year? Last year, Adam Thielen, I know, I know, I know. You love the voice. Everyone loves the voice. But the uh, – I'm a little sad we didn't get the voice, to be honest. Hope you you just did it like two minutes ago. <laughs> ah, it's too long ago. <laughs> Adam Thielen – from weeks two through six, had this outrageous run where he would have – he was on pace for like 160 catches, 1,700 yards, 14 touchdowns. He was seeing 30% of the targets. It showed that if you target him frequently, you get production. There wasn't like a – you know, having that correlation is encouraging. This year he'll be almost 34. But he did it last year. He is – like we, we act like having Deontay Johnson – solves their wide receiver room. This is the one of the worst wide receiver rooms you had ever laid eyes on outside of Adam Thielen. Incompetence through and through. Yes, they brought in Xavier, Legat. I don't know how much they'll trust him. Sure. Thielen, to me, is the trustworthy, late career, Larry Fitzgerald in Arizona situation where you're going to have more snaps than you thought he'd get, more first downs than you thought he'd get. Um, He won't be drafted by anybody. He won't be drafted by me. That's for, that's for sure. Um, he, but I want to I want to examine the why. Okay, let me let me tell you the why. The why is because what you you actually just said it and you don't realize you said it last year that you Deontay Johnson coming in to one of the worst wide receiver rooms we've seen in forever outside of Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen was competing with no one during that stretch where he was competing with no one and and, and acquiring thirty plus percent target share because you had to throw it to Thielen. There was no one else to throw the ball to. He had good numbers. He had a good stretch because volume mattered there. But now with Deontay Johnson there, can you imagine Deontay Johnson and Adam Thielen in this core where Adam Thielen is demanding 30% market share? No. If you look at weeks 12 on, that's where all of a sudden he didn't hit 30% market share, and that was without Deontay Johnson last year. During that stretch where he was under 30% market share. He was on a 17 game pace of 699 yards and no touchdowns. So it's like that's worthless. You can't play him. Yeah, but you also have the worst quarterback play in the game. I think that's. That, I'll take 25% target share, 23% target share of better performance. I'm just saying that, that, that. Do you think Deontay Johnson is worth rostering? I would rather roster Deontay Johnson ahead of Thielen, a uh, uh, player still in his prime. Thielen is, you know, I'm not saying you would take him over Deontay. I'm just the arguments that you made about this offense. I personally, Deontay's not getting 30 percent target share here. I'm right. not. I'm not crazy about any pass catcher here. I'm not a Bryce uh, believer. So, so you're not a Canales believer. Uh, I'm more of a Canales believer than a than a Bryce Young believer. So hopefully he can do what he did for Baker, do what he did, you know, for Geno Smith, and and get the most out of him. The reports have been good. Um, but the reports are always good. So uh, the you also need to look. This is a a psychology aspect of the game. But like through the the heater was weeks two through six, and it was incredible. It was a like a really strong run. Then you have the bye week, and it's not uncommon to for older players like Adam Thielen who to have a hot start and then everything falls apart. But how long did you keep playing Adam Thielen after everything fell apart waiting for things to bounce back like no he had five straight weeks in a row it's going to come back and it was just it was a fool's errand to keep playing Adam Thielen so I think that that should factor in 
And look, what I'll was be, cra- sorry. I say the and I'll be looking for that again next year of Deontay Johnson. It could take him some time to when they're on the actual NFL field to get, you know, get a connection with Bryce Young. I think it's possible that Adam Thielen comes out the gates pretty hot, but it's more important to remember that I, if he does that, don't, I'm not going to be fooled by it. I'm going to either pick him up off the waiver wire and try and move him, or I just like I'm not going to buy in that this is going to be an entire season. And they also spent a first round pick on another wide yeah. receiver with a brand new coaching staff coming over that wasn't there for Adam Thielen's heater. Keenan Allen, 32 years old. Wide receiver four in points per game last year. Shoo. Switches teams. Right now being drafted in the fifth round. It was the third highest fantasy points per game for any 31-plus-year-old wide receiver since 2011. It was so good. Like Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen's career will come to an end at some point. But the Bears went out added this security blanket for their young quarterback. Do you believe in one more year of Keenan Allen at this price? Where's he going? Fifth round, wide receiver 27. So you're talking uh, guys right behind Keenan Allen right now. Pickens. Would be T. Higgins, George Pickens, and then right in front of him would be Zay Flowers. Yeah. I hate being negative on two guys in a row, and especially Keenan, because Keenan's so good. Keenan's good now. Um, he He's a special player. He's always where the quarterback knows he's going to be. Um, for this, though, you know, last year you had Keenan Allen. You had Mike Williams go down early, and then it was the Keenan Allen show. Now – And Eckler wasn't Yeah, you had there. the Eckler injuries, too. Yeah, and so it's like – Okay, he looked great, but now you're you're not the one for this team. DJ Moore is the one for this team. Are you the two, or is Roma Dunze the two? And and probably Keenan is the two. But my worry, you know, is is that what you're going to see is a very poor utilization behind the line of scrimmage, really really short stuff. The way that you saw Shane Waldron use JSN last year for the Seahawks, that slot guy with just let's get him, let's get him the ball. Short. I, I just don't like that. Oh, man. I don't. If they, if they did that, I know it's. It, if they're seriously putting old Keenan in that situation, it will be a colossal failure. It's one of those where it's like we talk about. Okay, with these old guys, does he still have a ceiling? Can you make a? Can you make it's, the bowl case? It's different. Caleb Williams. It's, no, because the ceiling for Keenan's always been massive reception volume. Exactly. So it's harder to make the case that like is 110 receptions in the cards for a no. rookie quarterback to Keenan Allen? No. Okay, because, like, the, tar- the, other the weapons targets have to be insane to reach. I mean, all his best seasons, 159 targets, 136, 149, 150. If you want to give him just 100 targets, which is not the end of the world, you're not ending up with anything close to last year. Yeah, I mean, I, I I have him with 100. Unless he scores a bunch of times, which he that's not his usual he do forte, it. and that's not the forte of rookie quarterbacks. Even good rookie quarterbacks, touchdowns are the the thing that they uh, lack the most. I've got Keenan down for 130 targets, and and that equates to the way that I see the offense playing out. The wide receiver 31. So in the fourth round, ahead of someone like T. Higgins, that's just not home. and don't play that. <laughs> Let's just, Is that an in living color reference? Yeah. Homie the clown? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Don't play that. Goodness gracious. He's digesting. <laughs> Dude, it's the hot dogs talking. It's not my fault. Blame Andy. Do you have anything to add on Keenan Allen? Uh but the for the most part, no. But the only pushback I would say is I think that DJ Moore is an excellent wide receiver. I think he is a number one. I do. I'm going to leave a little margin that Keenan Allen actually is the number one wide receiver for this team. Cause the the dude, he is a a target earner. Like he, the just the way that he plays. When you look up, like would you rather throw down the sideline of a uh, to to a uh, to DJ Moore who's streaking down the field of like he's kind of got DB on him a little bit, or Keenan Allen who's literally wide open in the middle of the field. I don't know, man. Maybe you didn't see the quote from Rome. Uh, Ro- Roma Dunze is coming for Puka Nakua's receiving rookie record. That's, oh, no, we says, all need oh. goals. <laughs> it's like, good for you, man. 
I am most excited to talk about this player because I think that there has not been enough discussion in the last four or five months about what to expect from Mike Evans after last year. It was incredible. Uh, his ADP on the My Guys episode last year was wide receiver 33 in the seventh round. Yeah. It seemed insane to me at the time. And then this year. It seems insane again. He's the wide receiver 16. <laughs> I think part of that is a third round pick, so four rounds ahead. He was the wide receiver five last year on the year. So obviously Mike Evans deserves – all the praise in the world. Dude, first ballot. Um, first ballot. Second ballot. He will be a Hall of Famer. Not on the first ballot. Sorry, Got guys. paid. Consistency at quarterback. Um, you know, where are you with Mike Evans right now? Mike. He was finishing his sentence. <laughs> where are you with Mike Evans right now, Mike? <sighs> He's ADP sandwiched between Nico Collins and Debo Samuel. Two players that I would take like a full round ahead of Mike Evans. That, see, that's so. But I think you need to dig in there because the why to that is like Mike Evans, obviously, every year, forever. Yes. Literally, without exception, is essentially a top 12 wide receiver. Yeah. I, I mean, the only times he didn't do it, he played fewer games. I, maybe I'm allowing it to. Uh, impact things just too much, but the Canales factor is it's in my it's in my viewpoint of what the what's going on with the Bucks of having having that be an almost carbon copy of the success from Seattle, like where we saw Gino re, uh, resurrect his career and be great. We saw the same thing with Baker last year, and then Dave leaves Seattle. Things fall apart, I, so it, that could be oversimplifying it. But I, that's really how I'm looking at it. That uh, Mike Evans is, I we joke about it all the time, but I literally believe Mike Evans is a first ballot Hall of Famer who's going to have many, many more great seasons. But for fantasy football this year, I'm I'm going to bet against it. I don't, where I don't he's like oh, those other guys? I don't like that argument. Um, you don't like the. I don't like anything to do with Canales as the argument. That was the uh, problem last year about why he was undervalued was. It was a different quarterback coming in. And Mike Evans, of all players anywhere, has had the most change of everything. He's had six offensive coordinators. So is the seventh one going to make a difference? I, I I do think it's not a matter of will it make a difference for Mike Evans, but Makes will it make a Baker. difference for Baker. This is also a bet on Baker to some degree. It was a bet on Baker last year. If you bet on Baker, you got paid out because Mike Evans was great. The way that I've got him right now, I've got him down for nine receiving touchdowns. That's like as much as I can give him. Last year he had 13. If he gets 13 in my stats, he jumps to my wide receiver nine. So he's still got that ceiling in him. If I, I'm not, I'm not opposed to drafting Mike Evans. But this is a question of like, is Baker going to throw as many touchdowns as he did last year without Canales, with the new coordinator, all that? I mean, obviously Canales was a new coordinator for him last year. Uh, this is year two with Mike Evans. You can make an argument either way. But let's say he got eight. Eight touchdowns. He drops to like wide receiver seventeen in my rankings. So where I think that's, that's where he's being drafted. Yes, well, really. He's that low. He's, he's wide he's, receiver. He, yes, okay. he's wide receiver sixteen. I'm fine. I am fine and taking like, him there. And again, the my bet against Mike Evans is just the players around him. I have him at like but right the, around the 14. Nico common is interesting. I just I'm my chips are all in on Nico. But like top five finish potential. I think he can. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that is chips all in. That's like two bags of chips all the way in. You, well, if I had He's, three bags of chips, I'd have three bags of th chips on the table. Yeah, I mean, all in means whatever you have. Yeah. Like, that's if I all. had five bags, I'd yeah, have you five have bags. You can't, you can't have five bags and then be like all in and, and then put three in. They'll say, sir, yeah. you owe me two bags. That's just po that's poker. <laughs> this is poker chatter. Just poker bags. Homie, don't play that. <laughs> um. Okay, look, I'm just trying to tease out both sides of the discussion. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not. So you're in on Mike Evans. No, again. I, I, this is why I'm. This no, I'm is why curious. I start. By the way, I started with the. I'm teasing this out before you called me out on it. No, I'm not all in on Mike Evans. I think the variable there is the touchdowns. It's massive. He's never going to catch 100 passes. But I also don't like doubting Mike Evans because you know what you're going to get. Like 
to bring Nico Collins up as an example, like Stephon Diggs is a complete unknown. Yeah. In this situation, right? We like Tank Dell. Nico played a lot of games without Tank Dell last year, right? And without Noah Brown last year. Like he had an opportunity when those guys were off the field. CJ Stroud, is it a sophomore slump? Does he do the exact same thing in year two? We always think they will. Baker didn't. Baker had a great, you know, freshman season in the NFL. And the sophomore year was tough. So from a variable standpoint, you look at Mike Evans and what do we call this? Old, bland, and undervalued. There's a blandness to taking Mike Evans in your draft yeah. where you don't receive the kind of like adrenaline rush of drafting Nico Collins or mm -hmm. George Pickens or somebody that's exciting with the unknown, and yet you could just go win your league because of it. That's kind of where I'm at. So for to, to give you an answer, if he slips a few picks, if he's top of the fourth round and he's the wide receiver 18, 19, 20 off the board, it's a no-brainer guarantee you didn't make a mistake with that pick. Yeah. He doesn't get hurt. He has a great rapport with the existing quarterback. I don't really care about the offensive of coordinator personally because you just chuck it up to Mike Evans, just like the last six offense co offensive coordinators you did that with. So last year, like wild numbers. So on the season, because we, we think of Chris Godwin having a very poor year. Last year, Mike Evans was 25% of the targets. Chris Godwin was 24 percent yeah. of the targets yeah Mike Evans was 31 percent of the wide receiver yards Chris Godwin was 25 touchdowns Chris Godwin seven percent of the receiving touchdowns Mike Evans 46 percent yeah so like when you're the 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 thought experiment of like well Nico had these guys out the field he had a Mike Evans had Chris Godwin out of the end zone completely I will like say he always does of the four oldies that we've talked about so far on today's episode I like Cup more than Evans and if he's going a full round behind I mean I like them wow. about this I like them about the same and so for I like him more based on the fact that he's going a full round behind when you said well if Mike Evans you know slips and slides to the fourth round Cooper Cup's at the back of the fourth right now and I don't want to load up on like too many old guys you know sure not, not my jam yeah I, I just think this is, I don't think there's been a lot of talk about why Evans is where he is at in current drafts. Um, because he, you know, there's other players that people like talking about more. So it, it it's just going to be very interesting to me to see if he becomes a value again, because that's what happens. These guys end up being values over and over again, and he did get paid. Sure. Yeah. And who's more likely? Like if you had to bet your house on double digit touchdowns. You're going to do it with Nico or you're going to do it with Mike Evans this year? Evans. Yeah. yeah. I mean that so in that respect that's why I wanted to talk about it. Um All right. We'll take a break. Got one more name for you. Like I said, I got two more names for you. Ooh. Oh. In Start the with, break we got one more. Yeah, one more name did appear in the break. Brandon Cooks, let's start there. I've started to see that name percolate in the undervalued category. Mike is nodding yep. like a man who agrees. I do. Um, it was not a great start last year for Brandon Cooks. I think there was a lot of hope, anticipation, all the offseason chatter, and then he comes out, wide receiver 76, 88, 61, 82. Forget about him. He did more over the second half of the year after the bye. But after the bye, it wasn't great. I mean, it would have been a pace of 63 receptions for 846 yards and 11 touchdowns. After the bye, he averaged 11, 11 fantasy points per game, good for wide receiver 15 during that stretch. Yeah, but that was touchdowns. Yeah, that is yeah, the I problem. Mean, it was all 63 touchdowns. 63 for 846 won't get it done, but the touchdowns were there. He was catching – Um, he almost – man, he caught a touchdown – yeah, he, he almost had a, all the games. He had a touchdown stretch to to end the season. But his yardage was comical at times. 45, 37, 10, 14, 60, 39 for the last 6 weeks. He had a monster week 10, which is what we expected to see more of. More blow up games for Brandon Cooks. Now Mike, you like him at wide receiver 44 as a flyer late in Yeah, in it's, drafts. it's the I mean you saw, yeah. So right now he's going the wide receiver sixty five. Last year 
the all those games at the beginning when you were like Brandon Cooks had poor games. So did Dak Prescott, and for fantasy purposes, and like it's it's hard to remember now. It's because it can be very difficult to remember game script of what happens. But there was the the Cowboys were blowing everybody out at the beginning, except for the one game where they got crushed by the Arizona Cardinals somehow <laughs> in week three, which was, I mean, essentially a blowout in the other direction. You just had really, really wild games where even in that stretch, CeeDee Lamb, who's in alpha, CeeDee Lamb had three games under 10 points in those in the first six weeks. Uh, Why didn't they use Brandon Cooks to blow people out more? <laughs> at the beginning? Yeah, or uh, at all. What do you mean, at the end? Well, not every game. Like, if you're the like, Cowboys, why you're didn't like, you use Brandon Cooks a lot? Why should we not like blow he's got, them out? He's got too many similarities to Quentin Johnston in terms of getting a billion snaps and not a lot of involvement. I'm just asking why he's not a fundamental part of the offense. That was what was disappointing me, is it wasn't like the, he, he wasn't like a 1A, 1B, or 1A and a, a solidified 2. I think he was the 2. He was the 2. I mean, he I was mean, uh, like Ferguson. the tar target share goes CeeDee Lamb at 30%. Brandon Cooks at 13. 54 so, for 657 on the year. So, Jay, you're right. Ferguson would be the number two in terms of target share. So, he's the number two pass catcher. Uh, but then it was Brandon Cooks and then no one else above a 10%. So, he was, I mean, he's, he's he could be the number three then. I just, I like him as, as a bet on the Dallas Cowboys to continue what they did last year of we're going to air the ball out. We have, a, we have one geriatric running back and then with the other guy who is – uh, it can, at this point been in the league for a while, but still feels like he's unproven. So it's just it's a take some bets that Dak Prescott's going to have another great year. And if Dak has a great year, then I think that Cooks can. Well, he won't be. A, he's not going to be eleven hundred yards or probably even a thousand yards. But you get up over eight hundred and you get me six to eight touchdowns. I'm happy with that. I don't think there's a ceiling here anymore. He's he's over 30. Dak just had maybe the best year he's ever had, and Cooks finished as the wide receiver 36. So, uh, in, in a, as a late late pick in best ball that where you're going to have touchdown opportunities, sure. But in my redraft, I this is I wanted this to go differently because he got thrown into a trade that came my way, mm. and I thought and I would you, get into you this conversation. Yeah, I acquired him. He was just a, an extra player added on. And I wanted to get to the point where I was really in on that. But, as, you know, last year, 54 for 657 playing every week in Dallas. Yeah. And now he's older. How do you – I mean, how do you even play that? As, Homie don't play that. As a second, don't play that. As a second flex, I think you're going to see Brandon Cooks in there. Well, not on my lineup. Well, not your lineup. He's not on right. your team. That's right. Because I won't draft He's him. on old man's team. Speaking of old man's team, there's one other you name. You said I'm going to play Brandon Cooks because I don't have enough good players. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> no, I'm telling you you got old guys, and Brandon Cooks is one of the better ones. on my bench. You've got one other. I also have Thielen. You've, oh, man, oh, do yeah. you really? Do it. Do you really? We do should it. track how many weeks I start either one of those players. Let's, dude, let's go. I hope a lot. I don't really worry, guys. I lot. won't play either because I got to lock it. <laughs> oh, lock it down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but don't you have? Do you have Amari Cooper? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a, that's an actual undervalued old guy. That's okay. Being so disrespected. You, you love him. I do love him. I think he is a super solid player right now. He was good this last season. I I talked He's been about drafted it. like uh, Evans last year almost. I mean, wide receiver thirty. Oh, I thought you. I thought you were saying he was being drafted like Evans this year, which was like wide receiver seventeen. That would be crazy. But if he's being drafted as the wide receiver thirty. And this is, you know, a, a player who finished as the wide receiver 18 last year. I think it's the fears of Deshaun Watson. I've brought this stat up in the past. But there were five games that Amari Cooper played with Deshaun Watson. That was a pace of 95 for 1,632 yards and seven touchdowns. He's the clear-cut one for this team. He's, uh, I think he is right now being completely undervalued in drafts. Last year was, I mean, the one big week was amazing. 11 for 265 and 2. You had quarterbacks dancing all over the place. Not a lot of touchdowns. I I agree. I agree that he's undervalued. I think the Watson stink rubs off a little bit. Yeah, I don't I don't see him as having the the upside of a Cooper Cup or, you know, even a Mike Evans here, but at the same time, you don't have to draft him like those. 
And he even last year, keep in mind that all wide receivers that are past the top like six guys, they're all inconsistent. If you look at wide receiver consistency compared to wide receiver consistency, he has a consistency score of a B. So he has monstrous games, but they not all of his production came in those like a like a DJ Moore. He was actually pretty consistent. His target volume is assured, and he played well with Deshaun Watson. So I at, for wide receiver thirty, I think I think he's going to outproduce that this season. You agree, Mike? Yeah, Jason's talked me into him. I don't like it. Good work, Jay. I don't really like it. I hate playing with Voldemort. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know. The math is what the math is. Uh, do you guys, real quick, um, well, we won't dig into each one, but I just want to know, do you believe at all in the value for Mostert in the seventh? Yes. Yeah. Uh, James Conner in the sixth. Yep. Yeah. Kamara in the fifth. Yes. I in think PPR for I think sure. So. Zeke in the 11th. The 11th? Okay. Zeke is just, for fantasy football, I'm – I'm pretty I'm, out. Okay, I, I thought you were going to be in. I'm going to say I'm out. Kels that, that's what, even in the 11th, though? E even even in the 11th, I, I think he's not going to impact my team in a way that takes me to further wins and championships now. Does Travis Kelsey belong on this episode? Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I he's still my tight end one right now. and He's he's not bland. No. No. The, but he the might Kelsey's be are never bland. Third round for Travis Kelsey. Cheapest you've been able to get him in a long time. And and for, for just cause, he's going to be playing at 35 years old after a down year for him and Mahomes, and you assume they're going to save him a little bit, save his body through the season and not run him into the ground. All that being said, I do think that he has a good shot of finishing one, but unlike years past where when he finishes one, he's lapped the field and there's like a four-point gap to number two, if he finishes one this year, there's going to be three guys that are pretty close to him. So will on, they be the same three guys we think they are? Yeah. Okay. So it, like that's important. It I I think it is an important stat also to call out Travis Kelsey points per game identical as Sam Laporta last year. Mm -hmm. Like the the tight end one, it, uh, I get career trajectory and all that stuff that has to factor in, but like he was in points per game, he was tied with the tight end one. And he's going later. Okay, so undervalued. I yeah. I mean, I like the I like the four. I like the four tight ends at the top, uh, but I don't like Sam Laporte's ADP. Two oh nine. Yeah. Uh, you no no. I don't like it. That is going to do it for today's episode of the show. We got a mock draft coming next week and an AMA episode. Ballerslive.com. If you want to come see us in Los Angeles, ultimatedraftkit.com. Available now. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.